Hello and welcome to Social Church. We've got a fantastic testimony lined up for you today. Social Church is the platform that brings you testimonies, Q&As, preaching and live acoustic worship sessions every week. Like and subscribe to the channel to make sure that you get all of the latest videos. And make sure you listen at the end. We've got instructions as to how you can get involved. Yes, we want you on the actual program. We want to record your testimony and have your video on the Social Church website so that everyone can hear what Jesus has done in your life. Now let's pick up on today's testimony. Brilliant. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Amy Gallaby, and this is my testimony. Uh, I grew up in Houston, Texas. It's a, a suburb in Texas, and uh, my dad was Catholic. My mom was Methodist, um, and I had a brother, too. And my mom took us to Baptist church growing up, and um, I learned about God. I was involved with the kid group, and... I remember going to vacation Bible school, but um, one thing I remember about, you know, my view of Christianity back then was about uh, rules and being good, and um, it wasn't really about a relationship with God, it was more about um, being obedient and just not being a bad person, and my idea of God was equivalent to my idea of Santa Claus, where you know, he was making a list and checking it twice, and if you were good, you were going to heaven. If you were bad, you got a lump of coal. And so, um, you know, as a kid, I thought, oh, I must be pretty good. I think I'm going to heaven. And I believed in Jesus and God. And then um, around fourth grade, my church was bought out by uh, a Hispanic church. And um, Texas is really close to the Mexican border. So there's a lot of Spanish speakers in Houston, and our church was bought out by a Spanish-speaking church, so we couldn't go there any longer because we didn't speak Spanish. Um, So we had to find a new church, and we tried out a Methodist church that I didn't really like it as much, and uh, this was around fifth grade. And so we didn't really go as frequently as we used to, and we actually just stopped going altogether and I was in fifth grade and on, on up to eighth grade. By the time I was in eighth grade, I hadn't been to church in several years, and I was starting to question if God was real. And my mom had bought me a Bible for Christmas, and I had started reading it on my own. But, you know, at the time, they were just stories. I didn't know whether they were real or if they were just, you know, fairy tales. And then in ninth grade... I started dating for the first time, and my boyfriend was a Christian, and he wanted me to start going to church, so I, and I got involved with the youth group, and I was going to church every Sunday with him, and I was starting to believe in God again, but we, I still had more of a legalistic view of Christianity, where it was about rules and do's and don'ts, and, you know, my boyfriend was the same way, and he was kind of judgmental towards people who weren't going to church. And he actually started to become a little controlling over my life, and he said I couldn't hang out with my friends anymore because they weren't Christians, and I I couldn't drink Cokes because they were bad for me, and I couldn't watch certain TV shows. And it got to a point where I felt like, you know, my life wasn't my own. I was being really controlled. And then he started to become more physically abusive, and that's when I decided to end the relationship. And we had dated for a year. And so after a year, I I lost, you know, the close relationship with my friends. I wasn't as close to them anymore because he hadn't allowed me to hang out with them. Um, So as soon as we broke up, I, I went back to my friends and I told them everything about what was happening. And they were angry at him, and luckily they took me in, and... You know, I had my friendships back, but and I was still going to church with him. So even though we were broken up, I was still attending church with him. I started to have feelings for another guy at our church in our youth group, and we started dating. And I found when I found out that he was interested, and he was kind of a troubled guy. And this was now tenth grade for me, and um, he had a lot of abuse in his past, but he was kind of adopted by someone in our church and he was going to a Christian high school and you know I was infatuated with him I thought he was funny and attractive and um, he ended up being my high school sweetheart so we dated for four years 
Um, but after the four years, I he he was two years older than me, and he graduated high school um, two years before me. And he wasn't really going anywhere with his life. He was kind of hanging out with the wrong crowds and going in a different direction in life than where I wanted to go. And so I was already starting the question of future that I really, oh, this is the guy I'm going to marry. And we had been dating for four years. He was my first love. And so uh, I went off to college. And after a year of college, I got a call from my friend saying that my high school sweetheart had gotten a girl pregnant. And he didn't tell me. And I was just in shock, complete shock. But then I'm like, all these, you know, puzzle pieces started to fit together because there were certain areas of his life that I didn't know about. And they were finally starting to make sense to me. Um, so just finding out that news, I spent a lot of time in grief and in shock and just trying to answer questions about why he would do that. You know, after four years, you think you know somebody and then it turn out that you don't know them at all. And it really affected me at such a young age. And at the time, I didn't have God as, as a relationship. I, you know, I still viewed Christianity as a rule of, uh, you know, rules of do's and don'ts. I didn't, I didn't have God the way that I do now. So I had this void in me. You know, after that breakup, you know, I spent a large part of my adolescence with growing up with him, and he was a big part of my life. And I thought he was going to be my future. And so now that the relationship was over, I had this huge void in my heart, and I didn't know how to fill that void. And so about six months after we broke up, um, I didn't want to be in a relationship again. I, you know, I had spent so much time in a long-term relationship. I, didn't, I just wanted to, I guess, kind of find myself again. And uh, but six months later, I met a guy who was very interested in me. I wasn't really interested in him, but he kept pursuing me. And um, he flew me home for my birthday from college because I, I went to college four hours away from where I grew up. And so he flew me home for my birthday. He would take me to expensive restaurants, and he basically wooed me and charmed me. And finally, I gave in, and I was like, okay, uh, you know, I'll date, but I don't want to be in a relationship. I just want to date around. Uh, but it didn't take long for me to become too emotionally attached to him because he was filling that void. And since I didn't, you know, I, I believed in God, but I didn't have a true relationship with God, so I didn't know that I needed to fill that void with God. Instead, I filled it with this relationship, and and it became a downward spiral because as soon as I became attached, uh, he kind of changed, and he was no longer, you know, wooing me. He was now um, criticizing me. He was criticizing how I looked, um, my beliefs, um, anything that I liked. He was criticizing basically everything, and and I was trying to appease this person and trying to find that approval from him because I didn't really have that approval inside of me. You know, I didn't have that approval from God, and so I was seeking this guy's approval and just doing things that I didn't want to do and didn't, uh, you know, things that were against God's word, and it was leading me down a path that I didn't want to go down, and I was becoming the person I didn't want to be. And, you know, some of my friends who also grew up kind of in the Catholic Church who had also that legalistic view, I felt kind of judged and condemned by them, and they didn't really understand all the emotional turmoil that I was going through at the time. They just saw, you know, the sin that I was living in. And so I felt condemned by my friends and just felt ashamed of myself for, you know, going down this path. And this relationship lasted a couple years, maybe two or three years, and it was off and on. And I tried to get away from the relationship, but it seemed like I kept getting pulled back. And it was almost like an addiction uh, because I just I kept trying to fill that void and that loneliness that I was feeling. And then um, I kind of I reached a point that I hit rock bottom because I was at a point in my life where I, was, I had so much anxiety from what people, like I was afraid of what people thought of me. And um just generally in fear all the time. So I would wake up in the mornings, and within seconds of waking up, this dread would fill me, and I would walk in that all day long with with anxiety. And so I reached a point where I thought, okay, if I don't do something to change my life, I'm either going to die by suicide or I'm going to lose my mind because I can't live this way anymore. And so I started seeking a counselor, and she helped me to get on my feet, but I still had this void in me. 
And this is my last year of college now, and I wanted to make it the best year because, you know, for the past couple of years, it's just, it was just horrible. You know, I went through the breakup, and then I went through this horrible relationship that was even more emotionally abusive. And I wanted my last year to, to count, and I wanted to have good memories of college. So I started getting involved with every group there was on campus, whether it was uh, a political group or a religious group. I just started getting involved in everything. And one of the religious groups I got involved with was called College Life, and they had a Wednesday group that would meet. And so I went to this Wednesday group, and there were like hundreds of Christian college students and I kept wondering, like, why, where has this been throughout my whole college career? Because I had tried finding Christian groups, and it was kind of hard to get involved with them. But here were, were this huge group of Christians. And they talked about getting involved with community groups, which are like home groups. And you meet in somebody's home, and you have like 10 people, or you, a close-knit group where you get to know them, and you get to know God's Word. And I knew that was immediately what I needed. So I signed up for a home group, and I started going... And uh, my leader, uh, she was amazing. She just really helped me get to know uh, who God really was and what it was like to have a relationship with God. And at this time, I had had been carrying all this weight on me of regret and shame and condemnation for my past sins. And I I felt um, just really condemned, and and, um, I was living in shame, and shame is isolating. It takes you away from people and away from God. And so uh, as I was getting to know who God really was, I was reading the Bible for, for our community group, and I came across the verse, Romans 8, 1, which says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who believe in Christ Jesus. And in that moment, I feel like this weight I had been carrying was lifted off of me because I was no longer condemned, and I was no longer um, put in shame. And God had forgiven me. And um, I, I have always liked philosophy and trying to find truth in my life. And the more I got to know Christianity, the more it felt like a philosophy that made the most sense. And it felt like I found the ultimate truth. And so um, from that moment on, when I, when I felt that weight lift off me, it was a kind of a two steps forward, one step back process of getting a relationship with God and feeling that void with Him. And instead of trying to find my approval in people, I was starting to find my approval in God and find my identity in Him and not in a relationship. And it, it took some time, but um, over the past decade, I mean, it has taken a decade to get where I am today, um, I found healing and I went to recovery groups to heal from the abuse, abuse of relationships and to find my true identity in Christ. And, you know, sin does have consequences, and even though we're forgiven, we do have to, you know, move through the consequences and heal from the pain. But, um, you know, that's basically where I'm at today. It's finding that healing, and eventually I, I found a good relationship. I got married and found a man who's Christian who, who leads me closer to God, and um, I feel like, you know, our, my life finally glorifies him rather than, um, you know, shames me. So um, if there's anyone listening out there who, who feels like there's this void in your heart and you don't know how to feel it, feel it, or if you feel this loneliness, deep loneliness, or this weight of condemnation and shame from your past, just know that God offers forgiveness. And whenever you receive that forgiveness, it sets you free. And you start a relationship with Him. And you just pray, you know, ask God to come into your heart and ask for the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and to fill it and to... Um, allow that freedom to come into you or just receive his forgiveness and um, if you're you know looking for approval from people or validation from people and it's just not working or if you're looking for approval from anything that's not god and it's not working you need to go to him and run to him and just ask him and seek your identity in him and find out who god made you to be don't try to look for the world or look for people to tell you who you are look for god to tell you who you are how good is it to be here in all of these testimonies? Praise God. Now it's your turn. Now it's your opportunity to let us know what Jesus has been doing in your life. We've made it really easy. Just go to the website, 
wearesocialchurch.com. I've even put the link in the description below. Give us your details. We will be in touch to arrange for you to be interviewed over the phone so that you can let us know what Jesus has been doing in your life. You can also support us by making sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on all of our social media accounts. Again, they're all in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. Can't wait for the next testimony. See you soon.